Well, hello YouTube land. We're going to be looking at digital goodies today because DJI have just released some software which will let us connect a few things together if you have the right expensive toys that previously you couldn't. Today we're going to be looking at using this to hook that up to those and then also this and this, this to this and that. Um, yeah. It's going to be fun. Let's get uh, started. So, the first cab off the rank is Mr. Mavic here. Um, and this, in case you have no idea what this is, is the super expensive DJI Smart Controller. About a thousand bucks Australian. So, not a cheap toy, but it's an Android tablet with uh, the Mavic controller built in. And you can use it with other DJI drones as well. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it's got this HDMI out and that's what we're using today to hook it up to our HDO shelves. Yay, so look, there's our little view in the HDOs there and I can tell you that it does look rather nice. Um, we'll be doing a little bit of latency testing on this setup later but this is not the main thing that we wanted to test today. So this is, uh, this is all very nice. And through the Mavic, yeah, there's a bit of latency on that. And when you do fly a Mavic like this, that is the the first thing that you notice is that A, you've got a really small field of view compared to what you're used to on an FPV quad, and B, you um, you notice the latency straight away. But you know, you're pushing a sky camera around, it's a different sort of flying. Um, you get used to it pretty quickly, and it actually does let you fly much more immersively. And uh, especially on a bright sunny day, you can frame things much more easily and so on than you can with a little tiny phone screen. Anyway, that's not the most interesting thing that's happened today. It's just something I'm mentioning as an aside. Yeah, let's look at this. Rightio, so we have our FPV quad now with the uh, FPV air unit hooked up. So cooking itself on the bench. Uh, I've got my DJI goggles plugged in, and as you can see there, they've got the image coming from the cord. Now on the tablet, with the latest software update, there's a new app called FPV Live. I'll fire that up, and as you can see, it has absolutely no options. It's kind of useless. Um, I'm now going to plug in the USB-C connector to the goggles. This is unrehearsed. Oh, there we go. And look at that, we've got our quad view on the screen now and you can already see there's latency involved so you're not going to be flying FPV off this. However, for passengers, kind of look over here we've got of course in our HDOs a very bright image which is not how they look to your eyes, they look gorgeous to your eyes. Um, I just haven't turned the overall brightness of the OLEDs down so that the GoPro is happy with it. But there's an image in there which is basically the exact same image that I've got there. And that's it. Now you can have passengers if you spend $1,000. Go DJI. Um, the fact that this is just an app is interesting because someone can reverse engineer this app and figure out what's going on. This is just a USB in to this USB-C out. And you know, if someone could reverse engineer that app then you could use any Android device think about it. Any Android device could be broadcasting FPV. The other thing I did a test with this morning briefly on this was I actually uh, used this and I've installed YouTube on this and you can actually live stream a flight. It was a bit stuttery though but that's just the YouTube streaming it's not the, um, the feed going to the tablet. The feed's actually super smooth that's fine. So um, the question is, what is the latency? We all like to know what latency is, don't we? Uh, and I've come up with a little test which I think will be fun. Uh, and uh, if not, I get to make some bright lights in my garage. So um, I'm going to set that up and then we'll be back and we'll do our little latency test. And at the same time, we'll be able to get, um, hopefully, the idea of the latency of these goggles, the latency of this screen and the latency of these goggles, any additional latency on this HDMI out that might happen to be there as well. Um, yeah. There was something else I was going to say. Oh yes, this is in 4x3. So if you're going to want to run your HDOs in 
four by three, then basically you're letterboxing and then, oh wow, that looks amazing. That looks so much better than the DJI goggles. Oh, if only you could see this. Um, I might turn the brightness down. It's hard to convey how much better those OLEDs look than the LCDs in the cow face, udder face goggles. Um, and of course they're lighter. Oh, I've been flying a lot with these lately, unfortunately, because it's just, it's pretty and it's convenient. But man, these are going to be so good when, when the um, new Bite Frost comes out. Anyway, I'm going to set up my little latency test and we'll be back. Okay, okay. So I think we've finally set up. We've got all our goggles here. And they're all powered up. The screen's powered up. And the quad is sitting over there on my left. And a nice fan to keep itself from overheating too much. And my... Uh, Nice drumming stool, and what we're going to do is we are going to use one of these old boys, the old 580 EX Speedlight. And what I'm going to do is just flash it, and when I flash it, we will see a flash reflected on said devices, as well as the ambience of the room. So if we measure the difference in time between the actual flash and the flash as it comes through the screens and displays then we should have an idea of the latency it's just you know a mud map sort of thing but we'll, we'll see what we can do um, the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put this thing in its highest possible frame rate which i think is 240 so the res is going to go down i'm going to upscale you and then we're going to do a few flashes we'll see how we go you to actually see So welcome back folks, on the computer doing our little analysis now and I've been frame by framing through the video with the flashes and it's interesting, um, the results aren't absolutely 100% conclusive but we've got some pretty reproducible figures here so I'm just going to frame through one shot there's the flash going off there. It's split over two frames. Let's be generous and take the second frame and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six before I just see a glow in the goggles for the DJI system. Seven, eight mm, is where it really peaks. Um, so, and then we can keep going and we keep going and we keep going and then we get the peak on the smart controller video and the, um, the um, interesting thing is that the Fat Shark goggles hooked up to the HDMI there are uh, exactly in sync with the smart controller video pretty much from what I've seen so conclusions um, conclusions conclusions Six frames at 240 frames a second, which is it's between six and eight frames from the flash to it showing up in the DJI goggles. That gives us between 25 and 33 milliseconds of latency. So somewhere in between those two extremes is probably the realistic magic number, and that is the glass-to-glass -glass latency, um, so to speak. And the goggles were set in the high-speed mode. In case you're wondering. Uh, then we've got another 20-ish, 20 20-something, 20 28 to 30 frames after the initial flash is when it shows up in the DJI. So you're looking at 116 to 125 milliseconds there. Um, clearly you're not going to fly on that. So what do we conclude from today's testing? Uh, well we conclude that we have a valid spectator system although the image did freeze on me a couple of times while I was testing on the smart controller so that link is not necessarily the most solid one um, you would definitely not want to fly from it 125 milliseconds of latency forget it but that's fine for broadcast and event streaming so 
it does open up a bunch of possibilities. I would love to see an Android app which did the same thing as this app on the smart controller does. Um, hello DJI, you could even release such an app because you know what you're doing. You could charge people for it and they wouldn't have to spend a thousand dollars. They would maybe spend, I don't know, 50 bucks to stream to a friend or at an event or something. Event organizers are going to pay for something for that. Um, DJI aren't known for being the most responsive company when it comes to the wishes of the FPV community, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, other conclusions are, oh my god, the HDO2s look so much better than the DJI goggles when given exactly the same picture, um, but you can't fly with them yet because, well, or at all, because latency is too great. Anyway, uh, I might try and do a live stream just for shits and giggles at some stage using this newfound power of mine, but uh, overall it's a nice to have, <clears throat> but not a must have. If you already had a smart controller and some old, shut up, and some old goggles, um, then you can take passengers, uh, which is cool. Uh, if you don't, and you don't want to shell out a thousand bucks or another however many hundred bucks for a second set of DJI goggles, then don't do that. It's probably not good economics. <sighs> anyway, my phone's dinging, it's time to go. Thank you for watching. Um, hit the buttons if you feel like it, I guess. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Well, hello. Well, hello, YouTube land. How are we today? We're going to be doing some testing of some digital goodies today because DJI have just released a little bit of software it's typical 